Well, folks, it pains me to have to do this, but I'm going to have to give Joe Rogan a little bit of credit. Just a teeny tiny bit, but nonetheless, he does get credit from this particular clip that we're about to watch. And it's because for once in a very long time, you actually see the light bulb go off in his head because he begins to connect the dots and he recognizes the reason why the GOP is constantly engaged in a culture war. Now, has he fallen for the culture war on numerous occasions? Yes. Does he fall for the culture war by the GOP in the same video where he kind of sees through their ruse? Yes, but nonetheless... He puts two and two together, and it's really fascinating to uh, to watch. Now, this clip is going viral in leftist circles because he addresses his leftist critics who claim that he's conservative and he pushes back against that. I don't really care too much about that. We'll address that. But really, focus on what he says about the GOP and their hyper-focus on social issues, uh, disproportionately gay marriage, which is what he talks about in this clip. What do you think that is about? Like, what is this? It's not just abortion rights, but now they're going after gay marriage too, which is so strange to me that people are talking like Marco Rubio was saying that it was like a silly thing to argue about, to, to be concerned about. And then some other uh, senator who w is a gay woman w confronted him and she was furious at it because uh, gay marriage is not silly. It's what marriage. It's marriage from people that are homosexual. And it's for them. It's important. They, they want it. They want it. They want to affirm their love and their relationship and the fact that they're going after that now almost makes me feel like they want us to fight they want to divide us in the best way they can and that like that this is the best way for them to keep pulling off all the bullshit they're doing behind the scenes is to get us to fight over things like gay marriage or get us to fight over things like abortion or it's just like yes. why why yes. are you removing freedoms? Yes. And you know and then this new thing where they're, you know, gun rights, like trying to go after the second amendment. You know, you see that story that recently happened where there's a shooter in a mall. Wait, can we say something about the gay marriage gun? real quick? Yeah, please. Like if you're going to say that marriage is an important cultural institution to the fabric of America, right. you can't remove it to from Americans. Right. You can't go and say, this is important. This is what we do. We create a family and we love one another. And this is how right. we express our love. And then say, ah, oh, these Americans can't do that shit. It's so, so homophobic because you're saying there's something wrong with being homosexual. By saying that you are opposed to gay marriage, you're saying you're opposed to gay people. Yeah. Because if gay people are in love with each other and they want to like they want to have a celebration and mm -hmm. they want to be legally bonded and connected, and there's all sorts of benefits to that in terms of financial like, benefits, financial like, benefits, you build it into the system. Yeah. But not only that, like if your loved one is in jail or uh, not in jail, well then on that's trial too. you can't. Or, or yeah. I was going to say in in a hospital. Oh, like, that's right. You, you have can, access to them. Yeah. You have access to them, yeah. and you're the only one that has access to them because you're their spouse. You you're the one who has power of attorney if they're you know incapacitated. Like this, like yeah. there's a lot to like affirming that relationship, yeah. and the fact that they're going after that now, like that's the kind of shit that keeps me from being a Republican. Yeah, it's only one of the kind. Of, there's a bunch of shit that keeps you from being yeah. a Republican. Yeah, but that's one of the, like people will say like, oh, you know, you're a secret conservative. I'm like, you could suck my dick. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> I'm so far away from being a Republican. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I believe in the Second Amendment and just because I support the military and just because yeah. I support police. Yeah. Like I was on welfare as a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's important. I yeah. think so, having a social safety net is it's great. crucial. Yes. It's crucial. Yeah. Yeah. We should help each other. We're yeah. supposed to be one big community. I'm a bleeding heart liberal when it comes to a lot of shit. There it is. I just also believe in discipline and hard work. Yes. That's where I fall into the more conservative side. And but that's I'm okay. Not, yeah, but I'm not a person who wants to like keep all my money but, and not pay taxes. Like People have accused me of moving to Texas because I didn't want to pay taxes. No, I moved to Texas because I want fucking freedom. And how's that working out for you, Joe? Feel free yet in, uh, in Texas? Doesn't seem very free uh, to me. Seems like we have more rights here in Oregon than you have in Texas. For example, I can walk into a store and purchase weed for recreational purposes. You can't do that in Texas. My sister, my niece, anyone who gets pregnant, they can get an abortion in my state of Oregon. You can't do that in Texas. So if you wanted to move to a state with more freedom, Texas was a really bad decision. But nonetheless, let's get to what he says here. I, I transcribed his quote. That I think is really important. He says, it's not just about abortion rights, but they're now going after gay marriage too, which is so strange to me. 
He goes on, the fact that they're going after that now almost makes me feel like they want us to fight. He starts to really get it, and here's where it clicks for him. And this is the best way for them to keep pulling off all the bullshit they're doing behind the scenes to get us to fight over things like gay marriage. Exactly. Exactly. This is what we've been saying for a very long time. As the world literally burns, they do nothing about climate change because you're focused on trans athletes and what bathroom trans children are using. As we have an ongoing healthcare crisis where American citizens literally die if they don't have health insurance, you're fixated on don't say gay in Florida schools. They don't have an economic agenda that appeals to the working class because they are explicitly pro-elite. So they have to LARP as working class advocates by paying lip service to working class issues and giving shout outs to working class people, while at the same time continuing to push for tax cuts for the rich, continue, uh, continuing to push for deregulation. And Democrats do this too. They engage in the culture war as well, to be fair, but not to the extent as the GOP does. Now, if Joe Rogan can recognize the way that they use culture war issues to distract on really big issues like gay marriage, then he also needs to extend that, extrapolate from here, see the way that they use ancillary issues as Trojan horses to distract you as well. For example, don't say gay. This is something that uh, Rogan's preferred 2024 presidential candidate, Ron DeSantis, pushed, and Joe Rogan defended him. Remember the whole parental rights and education Trojan horse? Well, what did that turn out to be? As NBC News reports, Florida's don't say gay law takes effect. Schools roll out LGBTQ restrictions. Some school officials have been accused of warning teachers not to wear rainbow articles of clothing and to remove pictures of their same-sex spouses from their desks. But Joe Rogan supported that law. He defended Ron DeSantis when that law was being uh, discussed. So the problem with Joe Rogan is that he at least is savvy enough to recognize that the GOP does indeed use the culture war to distract, but only for these in-your-face fascists, right? If it's Marjorie Green, if it's someone like that, who's really like a foaming-at-the-mouth feral conservative, and they really hate gay people and they wear it on their sleeves, he can see through that. But if it's someone like Ron DeSantis, who's a little bit more savvy and covert in the way that he uses the culture war, then Joe Rogan can't see it. I mean... His preferred candidate has been pushing CRT, banning math books citing CRT, doing nothing but culture war things, but the reason why Joe Rogan sides with him is presumably because of, uh, I don't know, his COVID policies, I'm not really sure, but the point I'm making is that if you can see through the culture war on some issues, you've got to broaden that scope, acknowledge that it's not just these really big issues like gay marriage and abortion. They use these smaller issues, smaller ancillary issues as Trojan horses to get to the bigger issues. So for example, this whole don't say gay law was a ruse, a Trojan horse to get people to bite down on homophobia. And once they bite, then you've got them. Now you can sell them why we should ban gay marriage again. This is what they do. This has always been their playbook. And if Joe Rogan recognizes that, then I think that he needs to stop falling for it. But even in this video, he falls for it because he tries to draw a false equivalence between the GOP and Democrats with regard to gun reform. And he talks about, you know, them going after the Second Amendment. And I think that he's saying this because he doesn't want to turn off his right wing followers who are listening to this conversation. But the problem is that by citing, quote, going after the Second Amendment as an issue used to divide, he's again playing into the GOP's hand because the issue of gun reform isn't divisive to Americans. You're falling for the GOP culture war thing again, Joe Rogan. The GOP is saying, oh, well, the Democrats want to take your guns. But in actuality, that's not true. Most Americans support gun reform. So this isn't a divisive issue. This isn't dividing people. Let's look at some polls here. The overwhelming majority of Americans, including Republicans, want background checks. They oppose concealed carry without a permit. They support police and family-related red flag laws. Now, when it comes to bans on high-capacity magazines and assault-style weapons, you could argue that this This is more divisive, seeing that a majority of Republicans oppose that, but they're out of step with independents and Democrats. Nonetheless, sure, you could say that this is still 
more divisive. But that still wouldn't be comparable to what the GOP is doing, because even if there are elected Democrats who support bans on high capacity magazines and assault style weapons, they don't talk about it as much as Republicans. They play it down because they know that it's propaganda bait for Republicans and Republicans use that argument for wanting to ban high capacity magazines and assault style weapons as proof that they want to take away guns altogether. But we're not talking talking about confiscation. If you look at the gun law that was just passed, it's dog shit. It doesn't even enact federal red flag laws. It just provides states who have them with more funding. It doesn't implement universal background checks. So how can you say that this is comparable in terms of like it being divisive when most Americans, including Republicans, agree on moderate gun reform? It's not the same thing. And yes, again, I'll grant you that Democrats do engage in these in distractions as well because they don't really want to do what their base wants, right? They have fossil fuel donors, hence why they won't, they won't adequately address climate change. But it's still not necessarily the same thing. But I think that he's just trying to make that point for neutrality's sake. But we need to be objective here and acknowledge what the GOP is doing. And it seems like, to his credit... Joe Rogan wants to be a queer ally, and that's really good. The problem is that in order to be an ally, it requires more from you than just recognizing, oh, the GOP is bad on these big issues. You've got to be able to pinpoint where they're trying to find weaknesses in the gay rights movement. Oh, it's parental rights and education. Maybe we can use that to enact a modern day version of don't ask, don't tell, albeit for teachers. You've got to be able to pinpoint that. And more importantly, if Joe Rogan really wanted to be a queer ally, you wouldn't support politicians like Ron DeSantis, who's going after our rights, who repopularized homophobia in the United States with regard to banning conversations about being gay. Like, we're not talking about sex education. We're talking about teachers who can't even display photographs of their same-sex spouses. That's what we're talking about, and that's what Joe Rogan can't recognize still. So even if he's starting to get it, he still has a lot of blind spots. Now he says, uh, ultimately, that's the kind of shit that keeps me from being a Republican. And the Republican Party knows that, which is why a lot of them won't just say explicitly we're against gay marriage. There's a reason why Senate Republicans are scrambling right now with the upcoming vote on marriage equality, because they don't want to show their cards, because they want to be able to appeal to most voters so they can maintain their job in the Senate. But at the same time, you know, if they betray their base of fundamentalist e evangelicals, the most loyal voting demographic for Republicans, they fuck themselves over. So what they try to do instead is push homophobia in a more insidious way. Rather than just saying, we're against marriage equality, they push it in a different way by saying, well, we don't think that gay people should be allowed to teach if they're going to be open about their sexuality. So we think that they should hide it and they sell it to you in a certain way. So that way you're still getting homophobia, but it's not as directly spoon fed for you. You know, it's 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 them trying to do the whole uh, choo choo train with the spoon. So you open your mouth willingly. That's what they're trying to do rather than force feeding it to you. But Joe Rogan doesn't really get that. Now, he addresses his critics. He says, you know, that people think he's a secret conservative. Uh, and he says this to them. You can suck my dick. Uh, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Now, I don't think that anyone is calling you a secret conservative, to be fair, Joe Rogan. I certainly haven't. I've called you an open conservative. And my argument for that is, well, I mean, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck. You side with conservatives 95 fucking percent of the time. So how could you say that it's preposterous for people to think that you are a conservative when you've already endorsed a far-right fascist in Ron DeSantis for 2024, when nine times out of 10, if you're talking about a culture war issue, you side with the Republican Party. Whether it's, you know, trans athletes, don't say gay, you always side with conservatives. So maybe if you don't like that perception, you can alter your views, alter your way that you talk about this. And what, you know, you're trying to be neutral so you don't piss off your Republican base. If you really want leftists to continue watching you, maybe you can extend that neutrality to the left and listen to them. Hey, maybe bring one of them on once in a while. Bring on a trans person who actually cares about trans issue rather than shitting on them relentlessly and never giving them the chance to defend themselves. Now, finally, he says, you know, people think he's conservative because he supports the military, police, and hard work. Now, I don't know what supporting the military means, but if you mean you support endless war, then that's pretty conservative. Although, from what I remember, he's been against war, so I don't really know what that means. If you support the police, mm, that's pretty conservative, but there are a lot of, you know, bootlickers in the Democratic Party who support police as well. But he says, like, 
hard work makes him a conservative. No, the left also supports hard work and discipline. It's just that we don't support exploitation of one's hard work and discipline. We think that workers should get a fair wage. We think that they should own the means of production. That's what we mean. So, I mean, overall, this is interesting because Dave, uh, Dave I almost called him Dave Rubin, uh, Joe Rogan, not that far off, but, you know, not quite there yet, but Joe Rogan, He's seeing that the GOP, you know, they, they've gone too far and, and maybe they kind of overplayed their hand, not necessarily to the fault of elected Republicans, but because of the Supreme Court. But now that the right has been emboldened, they're really open about the fact that they want to ban abortion in all 50 states. They're open about the fact that they want to ban sodomy. In fact, in the free state of Texas, Attorney General Ken Paxton uh, just said not too long ago, I think a couple of weeks ago, that sure, he'd defend a case in the event Texas banned uh, sodomy again. So, I mean, if you genuinely are conservative or you move to Texas because you support freedom, you've been duped. And, you know, it's nice to know that you've been duped and acknowledge that you've been duped and try to move past that. So I'm glad that he's recognizing that. Credit where it's due. But, again, a little bit more introspection is required. A little bit more admitting your own faults and realizing how you've been duped, I think is necessary if you genuinely want to shake off this perception of you being conservative. But I mean, it feels like you're pretty conservative based on everything that I've seen you say. You can continue to prove us wrong by calling them out when they engage in this sort of hateful things rather than joining them though, Joe. But I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Last year, he claimed that he'd do better. Doesn't really seem like he's doing that much better, but if this is any indication that maybe he's trying to turn a new leaf, Good. I'll, I'll support him in his transition back to the left because I don't think that there's any monetary benefit for him. He's already a hundred millionaire, so he can say whatever he wants. But I think that he's just like naturally inclined to support reactionary views, which is why he believes in all of these dumb things that the right says, all of their culture war bullshit. But if he can move away from that and acknowledge that what they're doing is trying to divide people, to distract from their horrendous policies that they're doing behind the scenes... I think that's good. I think his viewers will be better off if he talks about that more rather than shitting on trans people nonstop.